climate change has recently produced a lot of rhetoric that's overshadowed a number of other environmental issues, but it's perhaps because of climate change that water has emerged as a factor in the election campaign. At the centre of that is the Murray-Darling Basin, and here's why. The basin covers four states. It generates 39% of the country's agricultural income, exports $9 billion worth of goods each year, and produces enough food to feed 20 million people. But over time, water supplies have been over-allocated, a problem made worse by a record-breaking drought, meaning most river valleys in the Murray-Darling Basin are now severely degraded. All three major parties say they'll buy back water from farmers to feed into the Murray. And they've offered conditional support to the Murray-Darling Basin plan that's due to be implemented after the election. But irrigators are watching closely to see just where they'll get the water from and how it'll impact their livelihoods. Another issue is the future of Australia's forests, which cover an area nearly the size of Queensland. Our forest industries are worth $23 billion per annum, and it's estimated that every year we import about $400 million worth of wood and paper, some of which may have come from illegally harvested trees. Labor says it would ban those products. The Greens say they'll restrict logging here and ban wood exports from important forests to protect biodiversity. The coalition says it'll deploy a green army of workers to repair the environment. The differences on policies between the parties are actually clearer at sea. The Greens appeal to conservationists with plans for more marine national parks. Labor's in the middle with proposals for more mixed-use ocean reserves. And the coalition's reaching out to recreational anglers by saying it would stop expanding marine parks. These policies all reflect a changing environment, but the debate on how it's linked to climate change is what's continuing to grab the headlines.